Welcome back to Market on Close. I'm Caroline Woods and for Oliver Renick. Joining us now, Patrick Neal, Managing Director of Distribution Cognizant. Patrick, thanks so much for joining us. Thanks, Caroline. Good to be here. So we're talking about your Reverb ETF, ticker symbol RVRB. Congratulations on one year of existence. Uh, my producer, Patrick, was, was breaking down uh, how the ETF works. It sounds a bit like crowdsourcing maybe, but tell us a, a bit more about how it actually works. Yeah, we try to keep it as simple and transparent as possible. We have an app that pairs with the ETF, and it's a vehicle for people to express whatever feelings they might be having about the corporations that are impacting their lives. Uh, we use a simple rating system. We count all people's votes equally, and then we track changes in average and medium votes over time. And as we see the average slash median uh, evolve, we invest proportionately. We start with kind of a market portfolio, and then we take active positions up and down on the back of these, you know, the sentiment data. Okay, so how have you seen the ETF holdings change over the past year? Any significant changes? Well, it's a tightly uh, risk-constrained uh, product in terms of active risk. So it looks a lot like the market portfolio, so to speak. And we've moved in and out of some of the big tech names uh, over the course of the year and currently have some minor overweights in some and some minor underweights in others. We keep our active positions proportionate to the number of people we see coming on and using the app. And then we constrain the absolute active positions at any point in time. Okay, so in terms of top holdings, we can see on the screen, but Apple, Microsoft, Alphabet, Amazon, NVIDIA, Tesla, no big surprises there. Any holdings that might surprise us in your ETF? No, you know, we're trying not to have a surprising product at this time. We're trying to make it something that's really easy for anyone to hold. Uh, and we're trying to have a very calculated, measured approach to incorporating our information and extracting our alpha. So we've outperformed our, our uh, peers as we see them, uh, even after accounting for our management fees. And we certainly hope to scale up the magnitude of our signal as app use continues to grow. Should we be looking at this as a leading indicator? What does it say about market leadership that this is where people want to continue to invest their money in? Well, we'd like to be a complementary product to almost anybody's portfolio. We certainly expect to have insights uh, to consumer sentiment that we get directly from the consumer that other folks aren't necessarily getting. And there may be some sort of macro information that we get to extract as well. But this is also about trying to just build a different approach to trying uh, to incorporate an impact investment portion in a person's portfolio. What is the tar target demographic for this app? It's it's really it's something we've built for anyone to hold. It's the idea is to try to have something that has uh, widespread buy-in, an app user base that's extremely broad and covers as much of the economy as possible, and hopefully some overlap between app users and investors. You don't have to be an app user to invest. You don't have to be an investor to use the app. But we'd love to have something where there's uh, massive overlap between those two groups. Are there any more plans to develop ETFs based, additional ETFs based off of this technology? Yeah, I mean, quite easily we could develop a market neutral product that exposed users mostly or owners mostly just to the uh, signal of the app and not to beta as well. And it would be great to apply this approach to some overseas funds as well. All right. And just tell me, why would I in invest in RVRB versus just say buying into the S&P or the NASDAQ? Because it's a lot of the same holdings. It's a lot of the same holdings. We've done a little bit better even after accounting for fees so far, and we hope to see that continue to improve. But not only do we offer this uh, slice of alpha, hopefully, but we're also trying to build a product that de-risks the economy somewhat. We, we feel that if we, got, uh, if we became a large fund, we would contribute to a bit of a social stability improvement. We would uh, increase the, we would improve the incentive structure for corporate management if they were responsive not only to uh, the whims and the desires of their largest shareholders, but also a sort of broader set of the population. All right, we have to leave it there, but really appreciate you shedding some light on your ETF. Patrick Neal, Managing Director of Distribution Cognizant, and congrats again, and thanks for joining us. Thanks, Carolyn.